podcast. Pod, podcast. 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 Pod, pod, podcast. Yeah, welcome to another episode of the Racer X Exhaust Podcast brought to you by Yoshimura. Jason Wygant here deep in the campgrounds trying to find a quiet zone. At this, the Rocky Mountain ATV MC AMA Amateur National Motocross Championship at Loretta Land Ranch presented by Lucas Oil. Really hard to say an event name that long, 972,000 times in one week, but that's what we're doing. We're here at Loretta's announcing the races, looking at the next generation. But the cool thing is we do get some of the previous generation to come here, usually for PR roles, they sign autographs, they hang out. But you get those riders in a much more relaxed environment than you would when you see them on one of their race days. You get to bro down with guys like Ryan Villopoto or Jeremy McGrath or Ricky Carmichael in a way that you couldn't really do when they were racing because this week they're not here to race. They're just here to hang out. So I wanted to take advantage. Kawasaki had Austin Forkner coming, so I wanted to talk to him. I feel like I don't think we've heard anything at all from Forkner since he officially went out with injury at the end of Supercross. So in this week's episode, we will talk to Austin about the injury, the recovery, how it happened, going too fast in practice, which he now admits he was probably doing, and a lot of other topics. So that's going to be a good one. Of course, this is all brought to you by Yoshimura. 65 years of four-stroke exhaust research and development. They've got something for everything you need. I'm here at Loretta's. I don't care if it's a pit bike cruising through running Yoshimura exhaust, and there are thousands of those, or if you're Jet Lawrence on the factory-backed Amsoil knee Geico Honda winning his first ever moto that he's ever competed in here at the ranch against a super stacked field in 250 Pro Sport. Yep, he has Yoshimura exhaust hanging off the back of his Honda. So go to Yoshimura-RD.com and get an exhaust system for your bike, be it a street bike, a dirt bike, or even an ATV. They got a lot of cool stuff. That's Yoshimura. And of course, also brought to you by Racer X. Racer X, the magazine. It's totally different than anything you're reading on the web or listening to in this podcast or seeing on social media. We have a new issue out, Marvin Muscan, on the cover. I wrote about some drama in the 250 class, and we're just about to set up a new issue that will be out shortly. And there I write about the gnarliness. I talk to a lot of trainers about dealing with the heat and humidity and the rough tracks through that three-race stretch. Florida, Southwick, and Redbud that really changed the championship picture for a lot of riders, like Ken Roxon, and didn't for others. So that story will be coming soon. So soon that uh, I think I can talk about it, even though it's almost too early to talk about it, because that issue is headed to the printers. And this podcast also brought to you by Air Medcare Network. What if you're hospitalized with an injury far from home? You'd want to recover close to family and friends. And with an Air MedCare Network Fly You Home membership, you'll have control of where you're treated. You'll be transported to your local hospital of choice with no out-of-pocket cost. Save $10 with the offer code 10MOTO. That's 10MOTO. Visit airmedcarenetwork.com forward slash racerxoffer1. That's the number one. Again, go to airmedcarenetwork.com forward slash racer x offer one okay let's get to it with austin forkner we are inside the riders lounge of the team green semi you'll hear the distant hum of a generator in the background just like you're probably hearing one now here in the campground of loretta lynn's look i don't have an office this week we're out the track we're doing what we can to get this done enjoy it we're talking okay. uh first of all we haven't even seen you in a while yeah <laughs> is it weird to when it like, the world just like turns off like, you're right in the hunt, everybody's yeah. talking to you all the time, and then you're just gone. Yeah, no, it's like, you go from, like, everybody was to, and then to just nothing. It's not like, oh, you had a bad race, they're just talking about you less. It's like, you go from, like, the top to just nothing. Yes. So, um, it's, um, I mean, I it's not like I didn't expect it. Like, I, I got hurt, and I'm out. So, that's yeah. that's what happens when yeah. when, when, when that happens. You just... You, people quit talking to you people are talking about you that you're, you're you're non-existent you're as good as your last race and they remember my last race but as soon as as soon as vegas came around and sexton won a championship Brandis won a championship what nobody cares you're some even, guy and then yeah, yeah nobody cares and then even 
after Supercross is over and Outdoors starts, first round of Outdoors, nobody cares about Supercross anymore. Like, it just yeah. how quickly things, people just forget that, I mean, you know, that's just the way it is. Yeah, it's happened to every rider. Carmichael raced half a season in his last year, and, like, his last race, all these fans are saying, I don't I, what is this going to be like when he's gone? The next week, nobody even said his name. Yeah. I mean, just, even him. Yeah. So, it happens to anyone. All right, the first thing I want to know is, what were the... There were two weeks between the injury and then racing again? Uh, more three. than that. There are two weekends, but three, like three weeks. Okay. So nearly three, four weeks. What was that? What was going on those three weeks? What were they like? Um, so I could um, barely even walk after I left. Um, after I left, uh, what was it? Nashville. Nashville. Yeah. After I left Nashville, I could barely yeah. even walk. So we got home, and I couldn't hardly do anything. So I, it was the first full week was just straight therapy i got like getting mris getting worked on by g figuring out because we didn't know fully what the problem was so we had to yeah. get checked out um i was getting it i think i got it drained a couple times it was massive um just all that stuff was like the first like three four days and then after that i could kind of start walking on it easy and after the first week it was like okay um maybe try a bike ride or something yeah. and could do a little bit of that um but really it was taking it really easy until um, <clears throat> in the last week I was like, okay, I felt decent. It was still not strong, but we yeah. were doing everything that we could to try to get it all, all kind of therapy, um, like hospital visits, getting it drained, getting whatever we could to, to try to make it work and uh, without doing much because it, we just couldn't take it and it yeah. still hurt. So I rode one day, I rode for like probably 20 minutes um, on the Supercross track one day it was Thursday I think before I left on Friday to go to to go to um, New York yeah. and um, it was it was actually like I was kind of surprised at how it felt um, mm -hmm. but the track was like pretty easy and I and you know the whoops weren't super big but um, I was pretty because I didn't even think honestly I was like expecting to go to the track and be like dude there's like I can't ride but right, so I was right. pumped to just be able to ride and actually be able to go pretty decent so that was pretty much it. I had good confidence going into um, going into New York as far as my as far as my knee felt, and then um, <clears throat> even the first practice I felt still pretty good. And then after the second practice or the second practice, I um, it moved on like it I it landed hard and it yeah. moved, and yeah. then it like it was seemed like after that all the work that we did to to it. get it to tighten back up, yep. everything that we did was just gone because it didn't move like a lot but it did grind a little bit uh, and it felt like the knee moved uh, and it, like I, I knew right after that I was because it moved a tiny bit one lap and then the same it was a pretty steep triple in a rhythm section so you yeah. landed hard and it moved a little bit one lap came around the next lap and it moved a lot and I was like so was it that, even a mistake like, or just straight no, up landing the jump yeah landing oh so the there's jump. nothing you could there's do nothing I could do I, no. see. I did the same thing both laps and it did the oh. same I had done that jump every other lap yeah. but it was just those two laps that I landed and it and it didn't and it moved a little bit and I was like dude and I just quit practicing like early and went back and just tried to ice it but after that I was like dude there's there's like all my confidence in my knee basically yeah. went yeah. out the door because I was like dude all the work that we just did is now gone and then it hurt more too so then I had to at, in the heat race, I was I rode awful, like because I was like, dude, I I can't ride without it popping out. I was like, I can't do that rhythm section triple. Yeah. So then I had to double through the whole rhythm, and which was slow. So I was like, like yeah. At one point, you were almost back to ninth. I was in, I think, yeah. seventh, and the two yeah. guys were behind me, yes. and then I got into sixth, and then some guys behind me crashed. So I was like, dude, it's a good thing because I might not even made so it. So you didn't so. even really pick up the pace. It just worked out. No, like like I I got a little bit faster, yeah. but I was still like four seconds slower than the leader that heat race and I was like that's not gonna cut it I was like that's when I was like okay I got like fifth in my heat race yeah so that's a tenth yeah that's it, like it's not gonna cut it like if Sexton wins yeah it's not gonna cut it so I was like it's not I gotta do I have to ride and like I have to just go for it in the main because I was like if not then I'm just gonna see the championship just slowly just disappear instead of like at least if I if I send it and it works out, then great. But if it doesn't, which I mean I didn't want to think, but like it was hard with how the day had been going and how my knee felt that like it was gonna work out. Yeah. But I was just like, you know what? I don't even care. Like I got it. Like I'm gonna try. And I did it, and I 
was just going for it the first couple laps. Sexton, I lined up next to Sexton. He actually got a jump on me, and I just went hard into the first turn and pushed him out. And then he got me back in the second turn, and then I... Um, <laughs> He's pausing. I didn't. I, I definitely hit him in, in the first and before the finish line. Okay. Um, um, just because I was like, dude, like, like I got to do something. So I was like, I I hit him pretty hard. Um, and then I got like a decent gap, just a little bit of breathing room. So I was yep. like, perfect. I was behind Martine, and I was just kind of like riding behind him, trying to like figure things out. And then um, I went outside after the finish and hit that. Um, cause the lap before I went inside and there was no rut and I slid and kind of dabbed my knee oh, and I was okay. like, okay, I don't want to do that again. So I yeah. went outside to the berm and banked off of it and then just had too much speed and jumped into that wall. Yep. And whenever I, I land in the air, I hit it and I was like, uh, like I knew it in the air. I was like this, my knee's not going to take this. And as soon as I landed, I landed kind of at an angle and it went out like to the side. Uh, so a different, it like grinded to the side. Yeah. So a different way too, that like most time it had just been going forward uh, and this one, it went like okay. this. Yeah. So. I was like, as soon as I landed and it did it, like, I was like, it hurt, and I rolled over the roller, and I was like, okay, I'll just hit this triple and see, like, if I can take it, and I just hit the triple, and I was just like, dude, I don't think there's any way, so I just yeah. landed and braked, and because after, it was just like, after it kept popping out and popping out and popping out, it just got looser and looser and looser, so there's no way I could have kept riding without it just continuing to pop out, Right. so I was just like, and Robbie told me before the race, too, he was like, if you, it was like, if your knee is popping out like every lap, he's like, if it just won't stay in, he's like, like, and you're not in a good position, he's like, there's no, like, point. Yeah. And I was like, with my knee perfect, I mean, I still would have had to stay up there. And I was just like, dude, there's, there's just no way. Like, I don't think I can hold this position. So I just, I just pulled off. I was just like, I'm done. How did you psych yourself up though? So you're saying after the second practice and the heat race, all the confidence in the knee was shot. How did you even psych yourself up enough to go with, with like four laps of fury? Yeah, I just didn't care. I was really? on the, I was on the line, just like mm-hmm. whatever. I don't care. I was like, I was like, if I crash and don't get the championship, great. Like yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. If I if I just my knee pops out and I have to pull off, whatever. I tried. If everything goes perfect and I end up getting the championship, great. But like, I'm not just gonna watch the championship go away okay. from me i'm gonna yeah. go for it and if it doesn't work out it doesn't work out and that's what everybody told me too like because i was like dude i was like i was telling all the guys they were like you're not fast and i was like well duh i'm not fast <laughs> like i can't ride any yeah. faster with my knee not popping out and they were like well you're gonna have to and i was like wow was like, okay. all right i was like all right then like i'm gonna i'll go for it but i'm just telling you right now that i don't think my knee can take it if i ride like that and i was like but i'm gonna do it i was like i don't care i'll go out there and i'll ride as hard as i can and if it pops out, which it probably will, then I'm done. So that's What are the odds that if you just rode at <clears throat> 70% and got 10th or something, that it wouldn't have done that anyway? Probably sounds like, even from practice, it didn't, it didn't it matter. I was happen. riding 70% in practice when and it, it when still it popped happened, out. Right. It, didn't, it wasn't yeah. so much as how hard I rode. Yeah. It was just the fact that landing on some of those jumps, like, yeah. like even just the jump, there was, it, there, there was the triple and then there was like a... a like a ski jump triple into the turn yeah. before the whoops there. Yeah. And just landing, because you wouldn't really hit the downside, you would kind of just go to flat. Just that, uh, just the landing. Yeah. It would it just wanted to I could feel it just like want to move every time. So it wasn't even like, oh, I was pushing super hard. Like, yeah, I was pushing hard, but it was because like if I just told myself, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do all the rhythm sections, that was the only trick. Like I could hit corners pretty much as fast as I wanted to. Huh. It was just the landing of the rhythm sections yeah. whenever I would have to it, oh. my knee would just want to move so yeah. it wasn't if, if I could do the rhythms that, that was the only place in the in the in the heat race why I was losing so much time so that I wasn't doing any of the rhythms right. I wasn't doing the triple after the before the whoops I wasn't doing the like big rhythm through one of yeah. the rhythm section if you don't do that that's three four seconds and that's what I right. was losing so like my corner speed was fine I was de- decent in the whoops yeah and I was just like the trick is gonna be if I can do that rhythm that it popped that it kept wanting to pop out on where you land hard and it it was okay through that better than I thought um but then it just did it in another place it, it didn't have anything to do with how hard I could ride I see I could ride hard it was just some of the landings of the jumps my knee just couldn't take it like there was nothing right just the way that you have to 
maneuver the bike and place it into some of that and you have because you have to like use your legs to compress yeah. and even just to hold yourself up off the seat on some of that stuff and I it, it just wouldn't happen so yeah I was going for it but it didn't matter if, if I wanted to do every rhythm on the track it didn't matter if I went 100% or 50 percent there was still the same risk because it was just the landings of right. the jumps okay in the races before that it, you got hurt in practice yeah you were so good in the mains yeah Practice was crazy every week. Yeah, dude. pretty much every what, week. What was go- were, did you re- were you bound and determined to always be fast qualifier? Or was stuff just happening to happen? What yeah, was the deal? You were I two different guys. Yeah, I don't really know. I only crashed one race out of all the seasons. Like, I only crashed once in a race, and it was the heat yes. race at Indy in the first right. turn. But practice, Other dude, than that, but practice, I would crash almost every, almost every weekend. And I, I, some of them were just little fluke things. Like, yeah. like I would get a little cross-rutted and just land off the side of the track. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it was maybe because... Like maybe I just wasn't as focused in practice, mm. and I was trying to push the limits too hard. Where in yeah. the race, if I just calm down and I'm just more, because it's the race, like I'm racing, so I'm more focused. I don't mm. really know what the what the deal was. Maybe I was just trying to be fastest in practice, but I figured out this year that it doesn't matter at all who's fastest in practice. Yeah, the, yeah. One of the races, Webb <laughs> won. He was twelfth in practice. Yeah, he's twelfth in practice, yes. and he won. Like he killed everybody. So. Like, it does not matter who's fastest in practice is what I learned this year. So, next year I really couldn't care less how fast I am in practice. Um, obviously, <laughs> I want to be fastest, but but it was it was it was yeah. it was weird too because <clears throat> how I would ride in practice and how I would ride in the main were so much. It was like it was like even if guys were faster than me in in practice, yeah. Like I would just I could just be like it doesn't matter like he can't do 20 laps with me like there's no way like he can't like and it, it wasn't just it was like okay this guy can run this lap time but just wait till the race because he's going to be a second off me every lap in the race and that's how it would always happen so it's not like i don't know if if, if those guys just could throw down one fast lap but they couldn't put together consistent 20 laps yeah or if i could just put together that fast lap 20 laps I, yeah. I don't really know but right. whatever I was doing in the race or whatever they weren't doing I'm not really sure but whatever was happening in the races obviously was going was it was going great was working great yeah. because I was and and I would I would be super smooth in practice I was trying to force the bike to do things yeah. and I mean to run a fast lap sometimes that's what you have to do yeah is you have to just kind of send it sometimes which um I mean, which I would do, and then in the race, I would be like, okay, just ride, and just riding would be fine, because I feel like if those guys tried to run that pace every lap, then they would make mistakes, and then, you know, so... You worried about it. So, I don't know. Um, it Just in the race, like, towards the end of the season, I wasn't... Like, the last race, I wasn't worried about being the fastest guy. When I went by the pit board that lap, I was actually, like, one point... I was a second and a half faster than everybody else when I went by this the pit board. This is in uh, Nashville? Or in, New Jersey? Uh, Nashville whenever I whenever I crashed really? and tore my ACL. So you I went don't the, feel that time you were going <clears throat> Not for really. I like oh, wow. I was struggling in those whoops all day a little bit. And um, those whoops and the, then the next set were both kind of sketchy and the track was a little hard pack, which none of the tracks had been previously. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just struggling a little bit in that set of whoops all day and I just got a little bit far back and missed one with my front end and it popped up and then it like I got off balance and I stuck my foot out to catch myself and it just yeah. It, like I didn't expect it to hit the top of the whoop, and it just caught me, and and I felt it pop in my knee. Um, but that wasn't one of the times. Not really. Well, really I went it. by the pit board, and Ollie had one plus one point five on the board, so I was a second half. Fa- I was yeah. faster than the next four fifty guys by like half a second. So it wasn't like I saw that, and I even <laughs> like looking back, I wish I would have. But I even debated. I was just like, a se- I went over a second. Fa- Screw it. Like I'm done. Like I should. Yeah, like, just roll I should have just stop the lap like but i i was like you know what i mean i'll just finish this lap it felt like a good lap i was like maybe i can put down if i can put down two laps that are a second faster than everybody it's gonna destroy their confidence for tonight so i was like i'll just finish the lap i wasn't super super pushing the envelope i just a little too far back in the whoops and missed it and then then tore my acl so it wasn't like that race wasn't me just trying to go I was already over a second faster right, than everybody. Right. Um, yeah, because in Atlanta, just, right, you crash in the whoops, and then in the night show, you just said, dude, I'm good. Yeah. I'm just going to get yeah, what I get. Yeah, that's what, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, it may have been a little bit of a different, I may have had to turn it up if, like, it was Sexton who was trying to pass me instead oh, of Ferrandez right. or Cincerillo, yeah. but 
those guys were just going faster, and I was like, dude, I crashed in the in the heat or in the in practice, and I was like, I'm just gonna try to like ride this one out, and I was like, I'm gonna try to beat Sexton, but I was like, if these guys get me, then I mean, I wanted to win because I could put that much of a better, bigger points cap on him, but right. I was like. I was like, if they're faster than me, I'm not going to over push it. I was like, I'd won three races and everything was looking good. So yep. Like, okay, so you, your three years in Supercross, you you didn't get the title this year, although you yeah. could easily say you could have, yeah. obviously. Your first year was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Then you started winning races the second year. Then you started winning more in the third year. Mm-hmm. What is that progression like? Is there something you can put your finger on that you got better at? <clears throat> um, it was like I the think, perfect progression. Yeah, um, definitely. Um, after the first year, it was my whoops. Me in the whoops. I was my first year was just a mess in the whoops. Okay. Like I was not good in the whoops. But every I mean, what rookie comes in and right. good in the whoops. Right. So I was a, I was horrible in the whoops my first year. Um, and my then my second year, I was a lot better in the whoops. And that was a big thing. I think we got the bike a little bit better the second year. But really, I think from last year to this year, my technique in the whoops hasn't ch- like my just overall riding hasn't changed a whole lot but we got the bike a lot better this year and i think that was that was definitely the biggest change um just was right away we we got some bike settings motor and suspension stuff chassis everything that was a lot better so um that was i think one of the bigger things because i mean the in in my second year i was beating osborne i was running osborne and i I beat ferrandez so like and he him. I mean, Osborne's doing good in the 450 class, and Fran has won a championship this year. So I don't think I got a whole lot faster or, like, something changed in my riding a whole lot because it was already pretty good. I mean, I probably got a little bit better because you always usually get a little bit better. But yeah. I think the big change was the bike this year, just how good it was. Because it, it turned so – like, when we found that setting, I was like, dude, this is ri- – I don't know – how <laughs> we didn't find this before like yeah. this is that much better so. and was it even a huge change or just one of those small things that it was somehow... they i honestly don't even know what it was they put a really? set of forks on my bike and say go ride it and i went out and i was like dang this wow. is this is good so are you okay that's actually one of the hidden things that people forget when kids come in they don't like testing is not normally even a thing yeah until you get to that level yeah. so did you have to learn that a little bit yourself yeah i yeah. i know <clears throat> a lot of um even just like more in-depth things that I know that I want to change on yeah. the bike like now and 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 two it helps that Ollie's been my mechanic for three years now so he yeah. knows what he already knows pretty much what I'm going to say before I even say it or or if he what he sees with the bike he'll yeah. be like oh back end's a little soft we need to do this or this or this okay. and I'm like yeah just go two clicks instead of three like whatever just anything you're like that you're at that level you can because even make I've suggestions got, yeah because okay. I've gotten just that much over the past couple of years like the first year I came in testing supercross is just Stupid! Like your rookie season, you don't know what you want. You, right. You get on the bike and you're like, "Dude, this thing's so stiff, I can't even ride it." Yeah. And they're like, "Yeah, well, this is, the, you're gonna get, we're gonna make this thing twice as stiff by the time you go racing." And you're just like, "What? There's yeah. no way." <laughs> and now I'm like, "Dude, make it like now." I'm like, "It's it's like it feels perfect at the rate at the at the test track." So yeah. I'm like, "You're gonna need to make it stiffer for the race." Like, <laughs> but as a rookie, you don't know that. Yeah. Even my second year, I was still didn't know that quite as like just i hadn't had as much experience right. and then this year i'm like yeah it feels good here so it's not you're gonna like i'll be able to tell you when it when it needs to go stiffer before it even needs to be there i'm just like yeah it feels like you it's getting it. a little like before it's even like bottoming out or something is yeah. like real off i'm like yeah well if this suspension's new when it gets some time on it it's gonna you you're gonna have, we're gonna have to go stiffer so i just gotten better at explaining what i want and what i feel and um sometimes it's still hard like you're testing minute things that you yeah. can't even you're testing bolts yeah and like right like for yeah. real we've tested bolts and i'm like dude i don't know what like what am i supposed to say they're like well this guy said he could feel this and this and this and i'm like i couldn't feel anything yeah. so like <laughs> some some things are I, some things like that are are not um you, you're not really unless you just have that good a feel for a bike and even then, I feel like like some people, I feel like change a lot of stuff, and they're yeah. they're chasing what they think it is, you and not what it actually they, are they is. They saying they feel that. Do they really? It's it's actually funny because yeah. one of the things we were testing, yeah, everybody on the team switched to it, and I got and I hadn't tested it yet, and I tested, and I was like, it's not good in the whoops, it's worse in the whoops. Like it, I felt I, I thought the bike flexed too much. Yeah, and. Then Ivan Tedeschi, who was our test guy, he mm-hmm. does a bunch of the testing. He went back out and rode my bike, and he yeah. was like, "I 
I see what he's talking about. Oh, okay. He's like, I don't All think right. it is as good. Like, mm-hmm. so it's just like, like he's a basically a professional tester now. That's what he does. So yeah. like, even it's just like if you test so many things, so many things, you don't know what you like. So I like to test. I'll test one, maybe two days, get something I like, and ride it for a while, and then. Okay. A couple weeks later, a month later, we'll test for another couple days. And but I but I like to get what I like, yeah. and then stick with it. I don't like to switch things at all. Even like and especially day of the race. No, not yeah. at all. The yeah. day of the race. I didn't change my bike clickers the day of the really? race. Really? Like I would tell them like one click, which is yeah. like you're barely even gonna feel it. But they just yeah. thought it needed to be stiffer or whatever. So I was yeah, like, yeah. all right, if that's what you think, you can do it. But I want like one click. So. Um. Um, I think, unfortunately for you, because you did so well at Monster Cup, yeah. when you came into Supercross as a rookie, yeah. everyone thought, oh, dude, there's not going to be a learning curve. He just has Supercross naturally. Yeah. And I think we learned that's not, Monster Cup is not maybe the best no. proof that, oh, he's ready. It doesn't even have whoops. So yeah. there was a learning curve just like anybody else. Yeah, no. Um, mainly just like at Monster Cup, like we run, all the guys that go there, you run Supercross stuff, but you don't run super like real yeah, yeah. super cross stuff right. the team goes here we're going to stiffen it up we're going to lower the front a little bit so it'll turn sharper yeah. but we're still going to make it comfortable a super cross bike is not comfortable to ride Interesting. it's not comfortable really? it like it's not <laughs> like it's it sits high it's stiff you can jump on the thing and it doesn't hardly move yeah. on the track it's it's better but it's not like a comfortable bike to ride yeah. so but it's only better if you actually ride the pace that yeah. that bike requires. And yeah, yeah, you, that's what you have to do too. Yeah. And and um, <clears throat> so coming from amateurs, you're like, okay, I want a bike that feels good. Like I yeah. want a comfortable bike. Yeah. And then you get to pros, and they're like, nah, this thing's not even. It's got to be way stiffer. And you're like, well, then it won't. Then I won't like it. <laughs> like you have to get get used to it, kind yeah. of. You know, like yeah. like yeah. it's just things like that 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 are hard coming from an amateur to the pros and that even if you race monster cup or anything like that it's not it's not it's not as gnarly because well monster cup doesn't have whoops and right you set a supercross bike up for whoops basically so i see set up if we go good through the whoops if it's stiff enough for the whoops then it's going to be stiff enough for most rhythm sections and yeah stuff. yeah so then that's that's you just have to the big thing for me is just finding the balance of front and rear and stiff and stuff and making it turn there's so so much that you have to think about and it gets confusing that's why i don't like to just be like okay we're going to test for a week straight i'm like yeah i get lost of what i even whenever i start to get lost of what i i, I forget what the bike feels like i'm like i don't know what what did i like like i'm like what what did we have the last time so i don't even i just lose track of stuff like that so i that's why i like to keep my stuff sweet simple and like it helps having Ivan as like a test guy too because yeah. he gets rid of all the little little tiny things mm-hmm. and we we basically just get to test the stuff that is all pretty good so that's that's really really nice that's crazy by the way like how fast does he go he- he's pretty fast really like some days he's like on pretty on par with us no like, kidding like probably half a second to a second off on good days yeah. so that's like that's good though. Like it that's, is. That's good for him. And like, he's been super cross in a long time. No, like yeah. he's he's pretty fast. Like, I mean, he he's been riding. He was riding a lot in Supercross too. Yeah. He's testing all that stuff. Yep. Um, but on good days, he's like like some days like he's like, dang, he's going fast. So yeah, it's just he's he's good. He's he's a good tester because that's what you have to have. Though you can't have somebody that's slow. Because yeah, he's got to ride. Your if you're speed. gonna if yeah. you're gonna test our bikes and you're gonna r- ride them as fast as we do, then you have to yep. be close. Yep. I mean, if you're within like a couple seconds, that's pretty good. Um, just because he's smart enough and he's good enough that he can be like, okay, I was a little bit slower though, so you might need a bit more, like a bit stiffer for these guys. But, yeah, you know, just stuff yep. like that. Uh, it's crazy. I know you and Sexton raced forever. How crazy is it that it worked out that you're the two battling for the title? If, like you raced your whole lives, yeah, right? Yeah. No, that's that's really like that's that's weird. I mean. It's pretty cool, honestly. Um, quite a few guys out of my like area, like out yeah. of my um, my like age group, actually yeah. are doing good. Like, yeah. like um, Justin Cooper, he's a, like a year older, but I still raced him. Cooper, uh, Sexton, Moseman, um, yeah. those guys are doing like right. We all got factory rides, so that's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Um, um, so it's like it's kind of cool to just to see that because um, I feel like. It's getting more and more like, um, kind of 
one guy actually does good out of out of right. like there's a bunch of guys them. that are fast, but yeah. then only one guy kind of makes it. So right. um, it's good to see that you know we're, we're all doing good, and that me and Sexton are battling for a championship. That's pretty crazy. Um, yeah, because we're both. I mean, we're both young. Like he was like 19, and I was 20. This whole Supercross true, yeah. season. Yeah. So um, that's just. I mean, that's just kind of crazy. Just it is. just that. I mean, it's yep. cool, but it's just it's kind of. Are you guys crazy. okay? Are you guys okay? I mean, because <laughs> sometimes um, I hear you're not okay, but I don't know. He's not much of a talker, so I don't know. Nah, what he's we we don't really like. We've never had like a, a like a big like oh like we actually used to be like friends, right? And then just well, yeah. Let's put it there. There wasn't any at Loretta's here. There no, was never any no, blow up. It's just hard to be friends like with somebody that you race with. That's understandable. Every single time, and everybody's always like, "Hey, it's you and Sexton, you and Sexton, yes. Fortner and Sexton. Oh, who's gonna be the guys? Fortner and Sexton. Yes. It's yes. it's hard to be. How are you gonna be friends with somebody when you're always sure. rivaled against? But your dad's them? never brawled in the pits. No, nothing, <laughs> no, nothing ever like There's that. There's many other levels worse than what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it was not. Yes. A, it's not a Villapoto Alessi right, situation. Right. Yes. No. Yes. It's just like we always race with each other, and it's just hard to be buddies when you are expected to go. Like if you have to, then you're expected to just you have to clean this guy out on the track. If your team is like you had a pass, why didn't you take it? Well, I would have hit him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they yeah. Don't they don't want to hear that. Like they don't care. <laughs> they want, they're they paying you that. to win, yes. so they're like, if I have to hit this guy, I don't want to not hit him because he's my friend, you know. Yeah. And it's just it's hard. I mean, it's it's hard to have. To be honest, it's it's for me, it's hard to have a friendship with guys that you race against on a daily basis because I'm not like a a two faced person. I'm not gonna be super oh you're my buddy in the pits and then go clean you out on the track you know that that's just not how i am so is it um, weird by the way when you we have these podiums and you're all next to each other we have the press conference where you got to sit next to each other and i don't mean you and sexton i just mean in general anybody, yeah. it has to be weird we're all kind of because like especially like if i like if i win and i got two guys sitting next to me and they're both they're both pissed off that they didn't win sure and they're just like we're just like sitting up there and like I'm happy, but even me, I just know I'm just like these guys do not want to be next to me right now. We yeah. don't want to be next to e- like any Each other. other yeah. I just know what they're thinking. Like right. this guy that got third, thinking I don't like either of these two that beat me. The guys that seconds, like I don't like the guy that beat. So I'm like the worst guy yeah. up on the podium yeah. up yeah. there. So um, and I just then I, it's awkward for me because I just know what they're thinking because yes. I've been in both of those positions and yep. it's just like especially if you have like um like a if you guys hit each other on the track or something oh, right. like that happens, yeah. then it's like, it's just oh, like so awkward. Last year you had two incidents outdoors where everyone was waiting for you to unload, but you didn't do it. Yeah. On Amart and Plessinger. Yeah. <laughs> but you didn't do it. Yeah. You you took the either took the high road or maybe you actually genuinely weren't mad. Yeah. But I, you didn't slam either dude. No, I was, I mean, it's like, you have to be on both sides of the, it's, it's not like, oh, this happened to me, this is the only time. You're gonna do the same thing to him. I see. Like it's like someday it'll be. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's not like oh he did it to you because it's you. No, he did it to me because I left the door open and he wanted. To He's trying me. to pass you. Like yeah, <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, like it's like yeah he he took me out, but like it's my fault. I yeah. should have figured out a different way behind uh, past him and then checked out. Like it's not. I mean, there are some. It's like there are some cases where like that was just a dirty pass. Yeah. But some of the stuff that happened last year was like, I mean, I I pretty much just put it on myself. Like, shouldn't have been. Like, I'm I'm obviously pissed at them. Like, why did you take me out? But I'm not just like completely blame it on them. Like, hey, if I didn't want to get taken out, I shouldn't have been by him. I should have got the whole shot and checked out. Like, that's always a stress. That's always just a thought. That's like, well, like, yeah, you you got taken out by him, but that I just think because that's what. That's what Robbie would tell me. Really? Like, you know, I'd be like, I was, dude, he took me out. Why weren't you in front of him? Like, that's that's what he would say. So I'm just like, all right, like that's just how yes. kind of I have my mindset now that like there's some some obviously are dirty, but yeah, those were just you were just battling for the lead. Yeah, it wasn't like they had you marked. No. They were trying to show you something. No. You're yeah, just battling for the lead. Uh, one other thing, by the way, your parents, you are you like totally first generation into this? Were your parents moto people at all? Yeah, my, they, my dad rode a little bit, but okay. it was just like local stuff. Like right. My my brother rode at first, and then he got hurt pretty bad and just just quit racing. And my dad, he had a bike just sitting around, so my dad rode it a little bit. Yeah. We we'll go to some races, whatever. Did your dad but, um, ride before that? Or did no. your dad? Wait, your dad only rode because your brother. His had, son. His brother, yeah, his brother. Oh, his brother. His brother had a... Your uncle. Yeah, my uncle. Oh, okay. had a, They rode and he got hurt and 
had a bike sitting in the garage. Okay. So I was like, oh, I'm going to go ride it. And then he got, like, decent, so he just started going to some local races. Oh, and all right. just whatever. And my, then he met my mom, and they started going, and then then they had me, and I then, like, so I just started riding. And then it was actually, I got pretty good, and then yeah. they were just like, well, at the, I was, like, winning most of the local races. Yeah. And then it was like, maybe we should go to some nationals, like yeah. Loretta's, and all just like then it was like Oak Hill and Lake Whitney and there were all those races and we were like do you think it was you see. seeing it and liking it or do they already know no. enough about it well was whenever it I you? it was just whenever I, I just grew up going to the races yeah like because your dad was racing yeah oh okay. so I was just going to the races and then I, I was see. just like this is cool yeah Dirt yeah, bikes yeah. Is, I had a, I rode learned to ride a bicycle like two so yeah I was like Bicycles are cool, and then he had dad had a motorcycle and it went a lot faster. I was like, ooh, that's that's cool. Yeah. Like, I'd want to do that, and then that's. Did your dad actually wear riding boots or just the gnarly work boots that he wears all the time? I picture your dad riding in work boots. <laughs> well, he wore real boots, but I think back then they were probably about the same as the Maybe work you're boots right. now. <laughs> Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Does your dad actually get mad? Because your dad seems like the most pumped up dude at the um, races. Does he have an edge like most moto dads do that we don't see? Yeah. Um, on. <laughs> There, everybody else in this room is laughing right now. He doesn't really have to that much because I'm I'm hard enough on myself. Okay. But he doesn't really have to yell at me. It's yeah. more like if he yells at me, it's like it's like I yell back because I already know he's like, dude, I like see. that was slow. Like, what are you doing? I'm like, I know it was slow. Like, I'm trying to figure it out. Like, yeah. he doesn't really yell at me because he doesn't really have to. Like, I already know what I'm doing okay. wrong, and and. Robbie's telling me what I'm doing wrong, yeah, so yeah. I'm like, I don't want to hear it from myself and then two other people what I'm doing wrong because I already know. So, um, but so he's not just, as moto dads go. Yeah, he's pretty, he's pretty laid okay. back as far as like screaming and yelling. I only remember him actually yelling at me. Him and my mom like actually yelling at me for like a motocross related thing was one was one time. <laughs> Glad you specified because I because yeah. I uh, yeah. <laughs> they only yelled. At, they both only yelled at me like full on yelled at me one time. And it was because I I just quit. Like I felt like twice and then I just cruised or I just pulled off because like, right. they're like why'd you do that? Is the bike? And they're like you're hurt. And I'm like nah. I was just over it. And they were they were not happy. They're really <laughs> mad. So after that I was like okay, it doesn't matter if my whatever i'm gonna finish the race so Good lesson so that was pretty much but you did it. get yelled at for other stuff kid oh, style yeah, pretty much on the daily basis no come on uh, <laughs> like oh i mean like uh, i don't know just school things like oh oh okay because that was back when i went to school yeah um yeah i don't know just doing things that my mom would tell me to do and then i wouldn't do them okay. <laughs> know, standard <laughs> stuff i guess okay. i don't know standard parent kid yeah, stuff standard parent uh, the basics here, you're going to be back on a bike when, you know? Two months, like end of September, okay. I, apparently. That'll be five months, so I would say somewhere in time. So probably not racing until Supi next year? Yeah, um... And if yeah, it'll be else super cross. No, there's guy. nothing. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, there's, there's nothing more, so yeah, I would just super cross next year. Might we see a little less in practice? I hope. That's the goal! That's... <laughs> I, I hope, yeah. I, I <laughs> do, I better, because if I... Like, if I crash in practice, I'm going to... Even towards the end of the year, I, I was just like, what? Like, I would tell myself, like, I would go out first practice and I'd crash. And then, then you, I wouldn't usually crash after first practice. It's just like, first practice, yeah. I would crash. And I was like, what? Like, what are you doing? I would get so mad over just a little, like, I would cook the tough box and fall over. And everybody was like, why are you so mad? I'm like, dude, I can't not crash in practice. The first race I didn't crash in <laughs> practice, I think, was... Um, um, yeah, I, I was going to say, is there I one? Think it was De- I think one? it was Detroit, <laughs> okay. which was like the fourth round or fifth round even. And I was like so pumped because I didn't crash in practice. <laughs> I was like, dude, yes. Like maybe I found it. Maybe I figured it out. 